a great big spicy hello. This is Diana Price, and you're listening to Diana's Spicy Business Talk Radio. Welcome. You know that every week we have in the seat someone that's from the who's who of their field. And guess what? I think you know what the seat means. The seat is an acronym for speakers, executives, entrepreneurs, authors, and thought leaders. Every Tuesday, we're here at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time, and we are talking up conversations that everybody wants to know about. Today's conversation is with a wonderful friend. Her name is Judy Hoberman. I'm sure you guys all know Judy. And if you haven't heard about selling in a skirt, (laughs) you're going to hear a whole lot about selling in a skirt today. So, you know, I want to talk to you a little bit about who do you think has better sales skills? Who has the advantage? That's what we're going to be talking about with Judy Hoberman. So let me tell you a little bit about Judy. What a great lady. I was on her show a few months ago. I think it was about a month or so ago. And we had the best time. So thanks for joining us for lunch today. And Judy, let me tell you about Judy. She's the president of Selling in a Skirt. So you're going to hear a lot more about skirts. Every time you see Judy, she's in a cute skirt. And if you want to see her in a a cute skirt right now, Go on over to dpriceassociates.com. She's got her feet up, hanging off the couch. It is too cute. dpriceassociates.com. She is right there, and I think Chris is about to put it on the screen. What a cutie. Oh, my God. Can you see it? Oh, it is so cute. So Judy is in the seat today. She has created a suite of workshops, seminars, coaching programs that take all the negativity out of sailing. 30 years in sales, 30 years she's given all of her knowledge. She's got a great sense of humor about the gender differences that we all have to embrace when it comes to communication. <laughs> we know what that is. She has, a, she has a lot of humorous stories about how men and women sell, how they manage, how they recruit, how they supervise. And, oh, my God, I know so much about that. So we're going to have we're going to have lunch. We're not going to have any calories today. So let's sit back and have a really nice lunch with Judy Hoberman today. So Judy, she's coming to us from the big, wonderful state of Texas. And I think she's there with us now because I see her great, big, beautiful smile. Welcome, Judy Hoberman. Yay, Judy. I'm so excited to be here. (laughs) So good to have you here. So great to have you here. We got to give you a warm welcome with all the applause. Let's get the applause going. Judy, Judy, yay. <laughs> All right. We're gonna have fun today. I can tell that already, Diana. <laughs> so Judy, you know, I was just telling them about the skirt and about your great, you know, all these, you know, great things that you have and how that great picture you're hanging. I just love that picture, Judy. You got your little, you know, your oh, what a great picture. Does that help you sell? Does that? <laughs> How does that help you sell? I want to know. What's it, the secret? It does. No, it does. You know, all it does is it extends my brand because you have to have an irresistible brand and everybody remembers selling in a skirt. That's so right. whether they remember my name or not, it doesn't matter. I, <laughs> you, it's just the brand. It's the skirt. That That's does right. it. That's right. So tell us a little bit more about Judy. How'd you come up with this brand, and you know a little bit more about your background? I know you've you've um, you've had you have a best-selling book you just uh, released recently. That's kind of cool. What's the name of it? The last book we just did is called Pure Wealth: Twenty Six Ways to Crazy Profitability, and that's actually my third book. This was a oh, book okay. with twenty five oh. other women. Yeah. I actually have written two books alone. One is Selling in a Skirt, and one is uh, Famous Isn't Enough. So the way I came into selling in a skirt is being in 30 years of male-dominated industries. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. And you know as well as I do that. Yes. I I see your hand is raised. (laughs) Whether you're the only woman or one of the only women, it's very difficult to be be taken seriously, first of all. Yes. But also to show that you really are intelligent. It's not just because you're cute or they want you to be the face of the company. You really have to know your stuff. You have to know your stuff. Without question. Without question. So through the years, I actually started taking notes about what was working and what wasn't. Mm -hmm. And I decided about five years ago to go out on my own yet again. Again? (laughs) Yes, yes. You know how we always reinvent it. That's how we are. That's funny. Yeah. 
So I started selling in a skirt, and it's really about the communication skills that men and women have and, you know, how they speak to each other, how they ask questions, how they work together, and how women can actually be very successful without having to take on the characteristics of men. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Can you stand it? And we do that so much because, you know, when you come up, then I think you you're, you came from a corporate environment just like I did. And, and that corporate environment really, it, it, it molds you into that kind of behavior. So, you know, you're so right that we, we, don't, we don't have to be masculine when we sell. We, we don't have to do that. We can be very authentic in our, our own self and it could be very successful. So it's this is going to be fun. This is going to be so much fun. Yes. So so when you did all that research, Judy, you know, the skirt part. <laughs> but you, you wanted to get from being masculine and selling. So the, the skirt came about how? How, was, how did the skirt part come about? This is so cute. I, I, yeah, and you know, I always tell, every man says to me, I don't wear a skirt, this is not for me. And I said, if I can have a dollar for every man that said that, I'll never have to work again. Because in, in actuality, it doesn't really mean the skirt. It means that you have to know how to be able to talk to somebody who is wearing a skirt. Yes. So it's talking to women. And yes. I don't ever talk about one is better, one is right, one is wrong. I talk about differences. And that's what selling in a skirt is all about. It's really about how do you take your sales professional career and make it work in either a man's world or a men yeah. and women working together. So Absolutely. that's really what the skirt is about. So, so what, a little bit more for our listeners about your background. You tell us you know, because you've, you've done so many phenomenal things and been around, Judy. So we, 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 want, we want our folks to know all about you. So tell us a little bit about, for where we, before we delve down, a little bit more about you and where you are in your life. I know you've done s- several businesses. You've been all over the media. So give us, give us some more nuggets about Judy. Okay, so my very first selling career was in the selling Girl Scout cookies. Just so you know, I was the number one Girl Scout cookie <laughs> person. And it was before you were allowed to bring it to a supermarket. So I actually went door to door. My second career was in the Fuller Brush career. Now, don't I don't know if you remember tell Fuller me. Brush. Don't and even who was tell the me. first door? I, yeah, and the first door I knocked on was my mom. And she said no. Oh, she, but she told how her, could your mother tell you no? <laughs> here's, Here's the lesson she told me. Just because somebody likes you or loves you doesn't mean they need what you have. Uh-huh. And she's but, right. <laughs> but if they know you and love you and trust you, they will also give you referrals. So that's how it all started. And then I went into commercial roofing, and I was the only female selling commercial roofing, and then security systems and copiers. And then I landed in insurance for about 18 years. Really? And again, the only, yeah, the only female that was in the area, the only one. So uh, that's how I came through the ranks. And I actually um, was very successful and nobody knew how I was so successful. They kept telling me, whatever you're doing is not duplicatable because you're basically a girl. You ask too many questions. You have to be everybody's friend. You you know, so, and I would tell them, the only thing I'm doing is building relationships. That's all I was doing and getting referrals. And that's how my career just, you know, took off. You know, you, you make such good points because when I was in corporate America, I had a team of salespeople. They're all travel sales, but insurance, we have so much in common because, you know, of course, my background is insurance and travel sales. So the sales and service team, just like you said, that it was hard to get them to be interactional. You know, I kept, t- I told them all the time, and this is just what you say, Judy, you know, you're saying it the same, but I tell them that it's not about the transaction, it's about the interaction. So that yeah. is really coming from a more feminine perspective, I think, but that perspective doesn't have to be feminine. What do you think? That doesn't have to be a feminine perspective. No, because if you think about it, if women are responsible, and this is a a known statistic, if women are responsible for 85% of all consumer purchasing decisions, wouldn't it make sense, whether you're male or female, to be able to have that relationship with women as opposed to being transactional? And so that's what I talk about. It just makes, to me, it makes perfect sense. If if I'm going to be the one that's making the decision, don't you want to bring me into the conversation? Don't you want to have a, re- a relationship with me? Right. Even though if my husband is the one that has the money, 
I'm still making the decision. That's correct. And that's yes. what it's about. So it's not about the transaction per se. It's about the relationship yes. that causes the transaction. Absolutely correct. And if you, if it, it's, it's so vital to connect, to really be able to, to understand. I used to, I used to tell my team, Judy, that if you can build a relationship, you can give them what they need based on what they tell you. Because we, if you, and I know you do this, Judy, have you ever um, in your teachings, in your seminars, you know, taught your people, th this, this is so, 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 so basic, about the soft skills. And I know you have, because I used to teach that all the time. The soft skills, go, go, I want you to tell me about that. Tell me about soft skills and how you, and how you understand and how you teach soft Soft skills, Judy. It's so cool. I love soft skills. The problem is that most companies um, do not teach that. There most companies go. are teaching you product. Here's how you sell my product. Yes. When in reality, you have to be able to talk about, you have to be able to do that fact finding process where you bring them into the conversation, right. where you ask the questions, and you actually, after you ask the questions, you actually have to listen. And that's the hard part because people, oh, especially you. salespeople, we're already thinking in our brain either how we're spending the commission or what our next response is going to be. Correct. So you, know, you have to actively listen. You also have to take into account body language. Oh, yeah. And you know, there's just so many things that people don't teach you. Yeah. They teach you product. They do. And a lot of times, even when they tell you, I'm going to do sales training, it's all about product. It is. And so, Yes, and it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. The product is the product that's not going to change. It's how you get there. What right. if you have already have a preconceived notion that this is what they need, and you haven't even asked a question yet? You already came in with this, okay, here's what I'm going to sell today. Here's my agenda, but it's your agenda. It is. It's not there. High five, Judy. I mean, you're hitting the nail right on the head. I mean, this is such a good lunchtime conversation because it's bringing back all of those things that, you know, we all have these pre, oh, I know sales. I'm a great salesperson, but, you know, if you don't keep learning, you know, you're just going to stop being successful and you're not going to continue to have success in sales at all. So, you know, I want to, I want to go into, um, you know, why, because to me, the interaction, the relationship, the connection. You know, you have that connection with someone that is so invaluable. You will have a customer for life. You will have a referral. You will get referrals all the time. So let's talk about relationship building. You know, why is that so important to you in, 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 in sales? <clears throat> well, I think it's important in almost everything you do, but especially in sales, because here's the deal. Every time you finish a, a transaction, so whether you've built that relationship or not, yes. it's over. You go from hero to zero all yes. over again. And in sales, it's all about numbers. So what if you built a relationship and people started giving you referrals? Well, that takes a lot out of the pressure of trying to find the next person that you're going to sell to. Right. Now, right. for me, personally, in 30 years, I have never sold a thing, ever, ever, ever. And yet I was the top salesperson. See. I was the top agency manager because I had conversations as opposed to a sales pushing, pulling, manipulative, you know, process. I had conversations. I asked right. a lot of open-ended questions because I got the why. Yes. I, I mean, you, you know, you, you sold insurance. Insurance is boring and it's a necessity, but it's boring. If you find out the why, why does somebody need insurance now? Why is somebody right. looking for exactly. life insurance? Why does somebody <clears throat> want long-term care? There's a why there. Mm -hmm. And if there you get that, it creates the relationship, right. which creates the referrals, which creates long-term. And sometimes that why is all about emotional. It's not about what they really need. It's about, oh, it's the emotion. It's getting caught up in the moment. So if you're transactional, like we're talking about, you know, you're going to lose it. You're going to lose the whole moment. So high five, Judy. Really good stuff. Good stuff. Um, <clears throat> just a correction. I didn't sell insurance. I managed uh, insurance and sales team. And mostly my yeah. team sold travel. They sold travel and insurance, international destinations, and the insurance, the insurance sales team was right there next to the travel team. So we had travel team, insurance teams, all back and forth together. So, you, you know, you, you couldn't be more right 
on the money. So I've got so many more questions for you, but we're going to take a short break and we're going to be right back with Judy Hoberman selling in a skirt. All these great things we're talking about, you know, who has the advantage, men or women? And since women, you know, make the majority of the decisions, shouldn't we be trying to really see what women want? We'll be right back. You're listening to Diana's Spicy Business Talk Radio. Stay tuned for more. Hey, are you tired of those same old energy drinks with bad taste? Make a switch to Pitbull Energy Drink with a guaranteed no aftertaste. Pitbull offers more energy with ginseng and vitamins B6 and B12. With a ginger ale, lemon lime flavor, Pitbull meets the consumer's demand for better tasting and healthier energy products with a guaranteed no aftertaste. Make a switch to Pitbull Energy Drink. Pitbull offers more energy with ginseng and vitamins B6 and B12. With a ginger ale, lemon lime flavor, Pitbull meets the consumer's demand for better tasting and healthier energy products. For more information on Pitbull energy drinks, bars, and mixes, visit their website at hiphopbev.com. That's hiphopbev.com. Online orders available at hiphopbev.com. Hi, welcome back. This is Diana Price. You're listening to Diana's Spicy Business Art Radio at the noon hour. That's right, noon Pacific Standard Time every Tuesday on www.rmconair.com. And as you know, you can always get us. You can email us. You can Facebook us. But, you know, if you want to go and uh, put in one of those spicy dishes that we love to have your recipes, head on over to facebook.com forward slash spicy business talk. Those recipes, yeah, remember what we tell you about spicy. Spicy does not have to be hot. It has to be flavorful. So if you have a great spicy recipe, we'd love to hear about it because we talk about spicy recipes right here on Spicy Business Talk. But the first order of business is business. And today we have Judy Holberman selling in a skirt. We've been having a great lunchtime conversation about, you know, how she came up with this name, selling it a skirt, and what it all means. Of course, she has a great brand. And we're going to continue our conversation with Judy because I think both men, men and women have some challenges in sales. And I want to ask Judy, what are some of the biggest challenges that men have versus women? And I think she's back with us. Judy, what, what, what do you think? Who has the biggest challenges and what are those challenges? That men have more challenges or women? Is it equal? We're back with Judy Hoberman. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's equal or not, but they both have challenges. You know, for women, some of the challenges are that people don't take them seriously or they don't dress the part mm-hmm. or they, mm-hmm. you know, they go in there and they try to act like one of the guys. And that is a challenge. They yeah. also apologize for everything. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. For what? Unless you're really sorry, don't be sorry. So it's things like that, you know, and and sometimes, you know, uh, they get some inappropriate comments and they don't react the right way. So, I mean, those are just some of the main, the minor challenges. I... For men, men, go yeah, right. go right ahead, okay, go for, right ahead. Uh huh. <clears throat> okay. For men, I think the challenge is more that when they're working with women, they don't re, they they don't really communicate the right way. For instance, a lot of times um, you'll see women nodding their heads and mm-hmm. going uh huh uh huh uh huh right because that's what we do. That's what we and, do. Right. It's just normal. But what that means is that we're acknowledging that you're speaking. Yeah. Okay. What sometimes for a a male salesperson, what he's thinking is, oh, she's nodding. She's agreeing. So let's close the deal. Mm. And knows they don't really get to the whole crux of the of the issue. But one of the biggest challenges going back to women for a moment is because we are so good at building relationships, we also become Vicky visitor, meaning that we never close the deal. We just make everybody our friends, and, and that's right. Check, we check, check their check, way, yeah, exactly. And, and never really get to the, the the call to action. Never really say, "Okay, let's close the deal," because we don't. What happens is we're so excited that everybody likes us so much that we'll just come back another time, and then another time, and then it never happens. So that is a big challenge for women as well. You know, you, you th- those are such good challenges and well, s- such good, you know, tips for our audience because these are real. These are absolutely real. And when, when we don't understand how to stop, how to just go, okay, and, and then how to close the sale, it's, it's just going to continue to hurt us. And another one, Judy, um, there, there, there is sometimes, I don't know, if it's in more corporate or if it's in, you know, because my audience is both, but 
In some cases, Judy, there's this script, if you, if, you, if you know what I mean. There's this script that salespeople are given in terms of you have to say this, you have to continue on, and you know, you got to get all this in. And I, I don't know, but I just don't think scripts work that well, especially, you know, when you have a, you know, a, a savvy customer, a woman or a man that's going to interject things that that script doesn't, <laughs> doesn't address. What do you think about scripts, the use of, of scripts? Well, I think, I think that sometimes when you're brand new to sales, it's not too bad to have some kind of guideline, but when you have to memorize a script, yes. it doesn't work. It never works. It it's never almost works. like one of the, um, the, uh, you know, the, the, when they call you on the phone, the tele, the tele, the, what yeah. Is it I can't even, what do you, yeah. What is it? I can't even think of the word. The tele, what are they called? Tele salespeople? Telemarketers? Telemarketers? telemarketers. Yeah. <laughs> Duh. The telemarketers. <laughs> You interrupt them, they can't, they have to start from the beginning. They do. Well, that's what it's right. right. You know, hello, my name is 12 different times. But what happens, you know, I, I, I think that it's okay to have an agenda. Yeah, it this is. This is what we're going to cover today. Yes. Okay. And, and then use your own personality, your own savviness, whatever it is that you need to use. But to have a script, yeah. it, it just doesn't, yeah. it doesn't work. I, I completely agree with you now, and I and you made a, a good comment, and I've always given my sales team and service team a talk track, and I want them to understand that this talk track has to be yours. It has to be customized for your words and what you say, and all you need to know is these are the elements of our product. These are the, el so those are the kind, like you're saying, you have to have guidelines, so you know know what you're saying. You have to know your product. I mean, so, and, and so a, a simple talk track is, is I think necessary, but you, we got to be careful when people, because, because you're right, telemarketers, you know, they need to listen to Judy more <laughs> about what to do <laughs> and what not to do. Actually, some of the, yeah. I've had some of them on the phone and I'll say to them, you know, what kind of sales training did you have? Yeah. And they'll say, well, we have a script here. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. <laughs> We can tell. We can tell. So we're going to talk next because this goes right into, um, you know, when, when, when I do speaking, and I know you do a lot of speaking too, you know, I do, I practice a lot, Judy, even though I know what I'm talking about. I want to know it. I want to rehearse it. The same thing in sales. I think it's important, and what do you think about this, to record a couple of sales calls. Record yourselves as a How do you sound? You know, what, what do you think about recording sales calls? What do you think? I think I think it's a great idea. It's the same way I, I you know, to video yourself when you're yes. making a call or to be on stage or whatever it is, because your body language also you can hear it over yeah. the phone. Yes, and, absolutely. And, you, know, you can see it. So I I think it's a great idea. When I used to train people mm -hmm. um, on sales on the phone, uh -huh. there was both a, we would record the call just to make sure that they were doing the right thing, not the script. But you could also, you know, what happens is a lot of times they they're sitting down and they're they have their you know their elbows or whatever yeah. you can hear they're not smiling and you can hear all that yes. and as crazy as it sounds i would make people stand up they didn't have a seat stand up right. and start talking that's as right. if you're with your friend or whatever that's right so i think i think recording the call is good because you can also hear some of the common objections that people are giving you Correct. and at least have some kind of you know recourse for that that's right that's yes. right and 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 you make such good points there because when you record your call when you videotape yourself it brings out all of your weak spots it brings out your good spots and your strong points as Absolutely. well but then you can say oh my god look what i look like look what i said how did i stumble over that so i mean it's just a great way don't you think to just discover all those weak spots Absolutely. And, and you'll be surprised that they're usually something that you can tweak in a second yeah. and be done with it. So, yeah, I think it's a great idea. I do. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. So t tell me about you were giving us some research um, earlier, you know, how women make are, are making the majority of decisions um, on uh, sales and products and things like that. So if women are doing that, how do men fit in? How do men fit in? to, and, and I know that, you know, selling is, is a skirt is directed toward women, but, you know, it's, it's, this is a good conversation for both men and women to learn what has to be done to really elevate your sales performance. Because in this world that we live in, even though you're talking to a man, like Judy says, normally it's going to be 85% of the time that the woman's going to make the 
the decision. So h how do you elevate that sales performance with, with that kind of stat? It's all about relationships. The whole thing is about relationships. It really doesn't matter if you're a female salesperson or you're a male salesperson, mm -hmm. because both have to learn how to speak to women. And you think just because we're women, we can speak to women. That's not true. It isn't true because there are two types of women. There are relational women and there's transactional women. Oh. And if you're in a rush, you know what I mean? If you're in a rush and you're speaking to a woman and she's giving you the yes, no, maybe so, yes. then you know she's not into building relationships right now. So you have to take your lead and give her the bullet points as yes. if you would yes. be doing that to a man. You know, and the same thing if a woman is more relational, you want to have a conversation and have more of a storyline to talk to them about. But either way, you have to build that relationship because you want to have something that's long term. You know, I can remember some of my agents when they would go in and be very transactional, mm -hmm. when that person would call them for something, uh -huh. they didn't want to call them back because they thought, well, you know, I must have done something wrong. Well, if you built a relationship, you wouldn't have to worry about that. Yes. You know, it's just, it's ongoing. It's so, it's so important. And as we were talking about relationships, you know, it's, to me, the relationships, the interactions, the connectivity, that, that it, it's all the same. But Judy, I want you to comment on the relationships, the, the service part of the interaction when we're selling. So why is it important to really have more of a, what, what I call a spicy customer interaction, a spicy servant interaction when you are interacting and looking to make a sale? You know, you want to make sure, you know, and, and when you say spicy, it's like when you're talking about your spicy, re, re, uh, your spicy recipes. It doesn't mean that it's, you know, hot and dirty yes. and things like that. Yes. It just means something that people are going to remember you for. Because you want to stand out from the crowd is basically what you want to do. Anybody can sell anything, you know? And so you're coming in, whatever the product or service is, you want somebody to not only remember who you are, but why should they remember you? Why? So if the service behind it. So if I said to you, okay, Diana, by the end of today, I'm going to send you X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. Well, I need to make sure that by the time I go to sleep tonight, I send you that. Yes. Because... You're, we're building that relationship and we're building this trust and respect. Well, that's what it is. I mean, you're with somebody yes. and you're you're creating future business. Absolutely. You know, it's much, it's much easier and less expensive to continue working with one person than it is to have new clients come in. And you have to have new clients. You always but if do. I did well, if I did well for you, you're going to tell your friends, well, wow, she was awesome, and I, you need to contact her. And, and that's what it's all about. So you talk about spicy. You want somebody to remember you, respect you, and, and refer you. Absolutely. So, you know, it's so important that, you know, you interact. And, Judy, you just, you know, all of, all of these techniques are so powerful, so powerful. Looks like we have a sales, a, a, caller, on the, a caller on the line, so we're going to interrupt just a moment, Judy. We're going we're gonna to put, put him on the, on the air. Um, good afternoon, caller. Thank you, for, thank you for calling Diana's Spicy Business Talk. And we've got Judy Homerman um, on Skype from Dallas, Texas, and we're talking about selling a skirt. How are you? Did you have a question for Diana or for Judy? Yes, I do. This is George Schaefer calling. Hi, How George. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you for, for your call. Judy, George is on the phone. George Schaefer. <laughs> Say hello. hello, George. How are you? <laughs> hello there. Hello. What questions welcome do you to the have? Show. Yes, welcome. I, 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 I'm, I'm going to rock your world, okay? <laughs> uh -oh. I'm going I, I, I'm gonna to ask you a question I don't think anybody's ever asked you before. How can you use You'd be your techniques? Okay. <laughs> how, how can you use your techniques in an e-commerce situation? Okay, that's a great question, a great and I question. have been ans asked that question before because here's the, the deal. No matter if you're offline or online, it doesn't matter. You still have to build a relationship. Now, if you have ever bought anything from Amazon, and that's the biggest e-commerce site that there is, when you come back to um, Amazon, they'll say, Hi, Judy, thanks for coming back. You were here yesterday, and you bought this, and all of your friends bought this, and the people that bought this also bought this. It's the same thing. When you have a, a, a customer, you know, an e-commerce customer, they become a, a personal friend of yours <laughs> online. So now you have to take care of them. 
Okay, so whatever you do, whatever your 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 um, process is, there has to be something that's personal. So you send a personal greeting to them. You send them a personal article. You send them a personal thank you note. Whatever it is, because you're building a relationship. Because guess what, George? If you did something great for me online, even though I've never met you before, I am going to tell all my friends. You've got to go to this site because women refer. Uh, goods, services, people, companies out 92% of the time. So if you think about all the friends that I have, 92% of them are going to come to your site because you've done something special for me. And, and it's, the same, it's the same thing as being in person. It's just a little bit, you know, you're not going to be able to see me, but maybe you have a video on your site, and so I got to know you a little bit. There's something that's going to make you stand out. You have to be able to have that irresistible brand and make me want to come back for more. Does that answer that question? Yeah, it it, it does. But it, it when, from the initial contact, okay, uh -huh. I'm I'm going on shopping on on a site, and then Amazon is as good as good as any. You know how how do you build that relationship from the get go? Uh, how do you design something that's going to pull all that information in? Okay, so you're going to have a target audience, okay? You're not going to sell something to every person in the entire world because nobody needs everything, you know, and not even air. Not everybody needs air. <laughs> so you're going to have target audience. And so let's say your audience are uh, women of a certain age or women of a certain profession or whatever. You're directing it right towards me, and you're going to say, if you are a woman that is blah, 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 and if you are a woman, that blah, 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 blah. So whatever it is that you're directing your market towards, you're talking directly to me. And if you're not, if I'm not the right person, I'm going to leave anyway. But if you're asking the question, and a lot of times that's what people do on sites. They'll say, if you're a woman between the ages of 40 and 60, if you're a woman between, you know, that's in the insurance field, if you're a woman that's doing this, then this is for you. And so it qualifies people and disqualifies at the same time. So now you've got my attention. That's the relationship. That's how it starts. You're, you're directing your product towards me. And if you're not, I'm just going to say bye-bye now. So you have to, from the very beginning, you have to direct it towards your target. And that's, that's how the relationship starts. You're, you're qualifying people and disqualifying people at the same time. That's interesting. Very interesting. I want mean, a little time to process this and... and you know, see how it fits for mm -hmm. myself and for my customers. Uh, you know, I'm, you know, selling accounting software more than anything else, which only happens roughly every seven years. People change accounting systems. And so. you usually sell that to men or women? <laughs> I bet you sell it to men, but I'm not sure. Who would you? Who are your normal customers, men or women, George? More, mostly men. Mostly men. Okay. <laughs> But that's that's changing quite a bit as as women become more controllers and upper management. That's right. That's right. Uh, but the other thing, George, is if you're selling to men, you have to talk to them differently. So for men, you're talking in bullet points. You're giving them facts and figures and features and benefits. So okay. men, you are you block block. You know, one, two, three. You you got to catch them real fast. For women, you have to be a little more descriptive and a little bit more of a storyteller because that's what we're looking for. We want to know you're you're reaching us. Why the heck are you reaching us? Because you have something to give us. You have to tell a little bit more of a story. And accounting is like insurance. It's boring. It's not sexy. So you have to <laughs> yes, have you have boring. to be able to reach out to you. It is. Yeah, you it mean, is. Let's face it. It insurance is. I mean, I sold yeah, insurance absolutely. for you know boring. for a long time. It is not something that you'd say, "Wow, I can't wait to be an insurance sales." <laughs> right. It, you know, you are. So you have to be able to capture us by offering something that we'd be looking for. Use our language. You know, is accounting something that just makes you crazy? Do, uh, you know, are you good with numbers? You know, here's, here's the thing. If you can do your own accounting, this is not for you. But for somebody that, you know, if you want to make it easy, we can help you, whatever, whatever, your, whatever your hook is. But, but that's what it is. You're talking directly to your client. Yeah, both the the term of easy, easy, and I think the feeling of one I'm not making the wrong decision, and is going to be something that's not going to give me lots of problems. Uh 
uh, is something I need to stress more. And also one other thing is make sure you have some good testimonials because we like to see who you're doing what with and whom and why. Right. And so if you've got some testimonials out there, we're going to say, oh, okay, I get that. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Thank you very much. George, thank you so much. I for really appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time to call us today. You are Talk listening to, to Diana's Spicy Business Talk Radio, and we are going to be right back with Selling with a Skirt. And who has the advantage, men or women? Stay with us. We'll be right back. Are you a diabetic? Need some energy? Need to quench your thirst? Try Pitbull Sugar-Free Energy Drink, the only energy drink named suitable for diabetics by the American Diabetic Association. And it's now available with no calories, no carbs, no sugar, and no fat, and a smooth, natural blend of energy, vitamins, and minerals. Need to quench your thirst? Try Pitbull Sugar-Free Energy Drink, the only energy drink named suitable for diabetics by the American Diabetic Association. And it's now available with no calories, no carbs, no sugar, and no fat, and a smooth, natural blend of energy, vitamins, and minerals. Pitbull Sugar-Free Energy Drink is the healthiest, best-tasting energy drink around. For more information and online ordering with free shipping, please visit hiphopbev.com. Remember, Pitbull Sugar-Free Energy Drink, suitable for diabetics, great for everyone. Welcome back. This is Diana Price, and you're listening to Diana's Spicy Business Talk Radio. We are having a fabulous conversation. I want to thank my sponsor. I want to thank Pitbull. Pitbull, the energy drink that just doesn't give you all that sugary. So natural, so awesome. And this is my second best flavor, blueberry pomegranate. It's always gone around here. I love cherry lime, but blueberry pomegranate is my absolute favorite. Pitbull, thank you so much for sponsoring Diana's Spicy Business Talk Radio. If you guys haven't tried it, you really need to. It's awesome. Awesome. Welcome, Judy. Well, welcome back. We had a caller. George was uh, was interested in the difference in, uh, you know, selling e-commerce versus face-to-face. And, you know, there's some subtle differences. Um, and we, um, Judy, you did a great job with, with George. Good job, Judy. <laughs> yeah, you know, but, but, it, but it is a concern now. Yeah, it is. a lot of people don't get from behind their computer screen. Absolutely. You know, they're sitting there all day long. And so how do you build a relationship? That's right. And when you build a relationship, it's not personal on the computer. So, you know, we're going to go just into that subject from building a relationship, you know, on the computer. Then how do you do a how do you build a face to face relationship? You know, a relationship that's based on your personal best. So let's say let's say you have all your sales skills, you know, your product, you know exactly you know how to, you, you've listened to your recordings, you've looked at yourself, and now you're trying to just build yourself up to be your personal best. All right, Judy, let us have it. How do we do that? <laughs> how, do, how do we become our personal best? We know everything now. Well, at least we think we do. <laughs> well, just the first thing. Don't pretend you think you know everything because <laughs> yeah, that's rule number one. You don't know everything. Nobody knows everything. But you know, you, you do have to put your own personality into it. Yeah. When you meet someone, you don't just come in and say, hey, I am great, and let me tell you why I'm so awesome. You have to take that spotlight off of you and turn it onto them because that's your job is not to talk about you. And, and we all know that we love to talk about ourselves yes. and how fantastic we yes. are and whatever else. But the point is you have to be interested, not interesting. So you have to ask questions that get them to speak. And then again, I go back to the open-ended questions. Even if you're not into the sales process yet, what if you started talking about something that you saw you have in common? Maybe there's something on the wall, like they always say, or maybe there's you know, a, a dog that you like, or you love the office, yeah. or whatever it is. You start a conversation and you ask them, like, how did you get into this business? Because people like to talk about themselves. Yeah. So you become interested. And you, that, that's really how you start the relationship. First, you ask the questions, and then you listen. And if, it, if you don't listen, why bother asking? Judy, I think I missed you for one half a second. I'm just <laughs> like, where'd she go? <laughs> but you're back. I think it was my headset. It was like petering out. You know, when you develop that relationship, because it goes all the way back to soft skills, and when you find out what they want, isn't it, I mean, I used to, and this is, I mean, I, I'm just loving this conversation with just like you and I having our own little conversation that we get to share with everybody that's listening, which is fabulous. So, you know, you want to also think about 
all the things that are going on in their lives. And how do you get to those things that are going on in your lives? Of course, I know the answer to that, and I know you do too. But, you know, when, when people come to you and they say, I'm interested in blah, 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 blah with you, and, and it might be a specific thing, right? So do you just go right to the certain thing that they ask you for, Judy? What do you think? Never. I never do that. I never do that. You know, it's just, you know, when I, when I have people that come to me for coaching, my coaching clients, they always say to me, I need help in sales. Yeah. It's never yeah. about sales. You it's it. never about sales. Yeah. It's always about everything else. It leads to sales. Mm -hmm. It leads to that bottom line because right. we do increase their bottom line. But it's always about, and I'll say to them, well, tell me what's going on in sales. And it just goes right to, mm -hmm. well, you know, I have trouble being confident or I have trouble, you know, being motivated or whatever it is. That's where it starts. And you right. have to just ask them the question, tell me about, or what's going on, right. or whatever you want, however you say right. it, that's your personality. Yes. It's the same thing. If you're looking, if you're selling insurance, yes. you know they don't <clears throat> need insurance. Why would you say, do you want insurance? You say something like, tell me why it's so important for you to put this policy in place. It's the same thing. You're going to get the same thing. I need insurance, but now you understand the why. And I'm telling you, the why is that's it. Once it's, you get the why, huge. you've got you've got them. You it's, know, they they just want to tell you everything about it. That's right. That's right. And you know, when when you delve down deeper like that, you know, you you find out a lot more about your client, your customer, and you know, you that's that's just the beginning part of them trusting you because when they have that trust in you, when they see that you're interested in more than just what they ask you about, you're asking questions about why, it it, it makes for a much better relationship and it's just it's 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 awesome when you when you think about, you know, how you can really even make a friend out of a client. So it's really cool because I think what you're doing is you're starting to leverage your personal style. You're starting to to really come out and into your own authentic, uh, uh, authenticity. You know, Judy, and I think you mentioned some personal uh, leverage before. So why don't you, why don't you uh, elaborate a little bit more about how you can really strategically level, leverage your own personal style when you start selling and when, when, you know, when you're all, all into the activity is of you know, asking the questions questions and you know how you leverage your own personal style I think it's so important to do that it is important and one of the things you have to remember is you know like let's just go back on the phone for a moment and somebody says to you I want to you know set up an appointment with you however mm -hmm. blah 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 is going on. my daughter's getting married I'm going on vacation so I used to always take notes and so when yeah. I would get there yeah. you know whenever that appointment was set the first thing I talk about was their daughter's wedding how was the wedding and they would think how the heck did she remember yeah. that you know, because it was just, you know, it was just in passing that right. they said that. Right. So that's part of the thing is where you actually can follow through with what you're talking about. But you also have to remember that you want to be able to um, help this person with more than what you're selling. Okay, so whatever you're it doesn't matter whether mm -hmm. you're offline or online. There's something else that you're going to be able to help them with. So it's almost like you're taking out your mental Rolodex mm -hmm. and trying to figure out where can I help them next. Right. Okay. So I'm telling you a life insurance policy, and you're also telling me that you're writing a book. Well, I already have in my head, I know a publisher for right. you. I know places where you can speak. Right. And so we have this give and take back and forth. And there's more than just that insurance relationship right. or more than just that e-commerce relationship. Now there's more. You know, mm -hmm. so it just leads into other things. Because you, that's how you develop a customer for life. That's how you develop that lifelong following. Just like you were saying, you delve into, okay, now I want that life insurance, but now what else is going on in my life? Maybe I have a graduation, a son or a daughter or a wedding or, you know, things like that that are happening. And you keep looking how you can funnel your customers right through that's the right. process. You keep one thing after another, after another, after another. And it's so very important to keep that funnel going because that's how you keep your customers for life, right? Right. And it's not manipulation. It's yeah. actually you're totally interested in their lives. That's correct. And that's what happens. If, if a person's going to buy from you once, they're going to buy from you once. That's and it doesn't right. matter what you do. That's you right. You just need it today. That's and right. you but, but everybody is not everybody. So here, you know, if you do continue that, right. you do keep them in your funnel and you do keep going with them. There's so much more you can do together. Yes. And then you're almost like each other's walking ambassador because now I'm going to say, oh, my God, Diana Price, if you haven't met her, you need to know her. And every place I go, I'm going to try to see where can I fit you in. Mm-hmm. 
So it, it works like that as well. Yeah. Yeah. And just like what George was saying, he, the, our caller George was saying that his accounting software, it, it's like an every seven year current, I believe that's what he said. Every seven years, he will sell you know, new accounting software. So for George, it's really important to develop a relationship where there's other products that he either has to create or other services and interactions that he has to create so his customers continue to funnel through his process. And like you said, it's not manipulation. It's it's that connection, it's that interaction, and it keeps you going because most of it, you know, with the seven-year relationship, it's probably going to be referrals, interactions, and things like that. How can he keep his relationship going through a funnel with a seven-year with a seven-year cycle, Judy? Well, you know, one of the things he's doing is he's taking away this not so much fun activity for people and if he does it the right way which if somebody's staying with him for a long time he's obviously doing the right thing yeah. so yes he should come out with something new that's if right. that's possible okay. or he can just do something special for them you know he can have some kind of a, a thank you to his you know longtime customers and I, I you know it could be almost anything yeah. that he could do but he that's a long time to stay with someone it really is but I haven't changed my accountant in well, since 1990. Oh, see. I have not changed my accountant. Now that's okay? a long time to stay with someone. <laughs> and he's in Connecticut. And oh my I'm God! In Dallas. See, that's a big deal. That's a huge deal. That's a big deal. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Right. So George is if he's doing the same thing. George is doing. And that's funny because my accountant's name is George also. <laughs> but you know, if he's doing the right thing, then people are going to not only stay with him, but they're going to start referring more people that's to him. Right. They're going to say, I've been with George since, right. you know, for the last 10 years, he has done me right. right. And so it just continues to go. You know, I, it, I think it's a, you know, a great thing that he's doing because yeah. there's so many people that don't know what the heck to do. So, and again, if he's specializing in a, like mine specializes in self-employed and uh -huh. small businesses. So I know I can push people towards him if that's what, you know, if that's what they're doing, because I know his market. Mm -hmm. So if George says to me, if you're, if this George, the caller George said, my market is, you know, women that live in Dallas, Texas, I can help him that way. You have to know the niche. That's what I'm, that's why I tried to say, if you know your niche market, yes. people know you're the yes. expert and people can refer people to you. You got it. Good stuff. So let's talk a little bit now about how we engage to uh, continue our sales and to get sales and to to network and to to, re to really, you know, use, you know, some social skills to to uh, engage people. Because, you know, like you said, it's it's important to have your repeat customers. That's your base. That's your foundation. You're always going to have, you know, accessorizing your foundation. Now, now we want to engage. So what's a good way to engage others effectively in the sales process, Judy? Well, I think that you have to network with intention. Okay. I, I mean, when I started my company, I networked all over the place and I had no intention. I mean, I just networked <laughs> everywhere and I got nothing done. Okay? No so I'm telling you the mistakes that I, <laughs> if you network with intention, you're going to do two ways. The first way is you have to know where your target audience is hanging out, yes. whether it's online yes. or offline. And you have to appear there. So if it's a networking event, you go. If it's a, if it's, you know, a LinkedIn group, you join. Whatever it is, that's the first intentional networking that you do. The second way is equally, if not more important, is that you're going to network with strategic partners who are already in that market space that complement you, that can get you into it. Uh -huh. so, okay, so if, you know, if, if you're a realtor, mm -hmm. a strategic partner mm -hmm. for you might be um, a moving company or um, a storage unit or a title company or a mortgage company. You're, you need to network with these people in order for them to think of you when somebody wants to buy or sell a home. Okay, so you have to really know your market yes. and you really have to know who the strategic partners are. So if you do it both ways, mm -hmm. you're gonna have leads coming in from so many different directions. You know, you hit the nail on the high because when you network, it has to be with intention because, you know, how, how many people, you know, just gather stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks of cards and, you know, they, they get lost, they get old, and they get staled, and nothing ever happens to them. So, you know, it's so, so true. 
Absolutely. Yes. And you know, here's the other thing. When you actually are networking, women and men do it differently, but you know, men are the collectors of cards. They want to see who's got the biggest the stack. <laughs> women actually have a goal. Yes, I know. Size matters sometimes. <laughs> but um, my, my goal, there, you wanted to be spicy. Here's your spicy. <laughs> High five, Judy. High five. I got you. But here's my goal. When I go to a networking event, I look for three amazing people, male or female. Doesn't It depends what the networking event is. And I will go up to you and I will say, Diana, I was looking to meet three amazing women today and you are one of them. Great. I have just changed the dynamics of that conversation because yes, you you're have. thinking, wow, why am I one of the three? And so now we have a conversation. But I only look for three people. That's yeah. it. Not yeah. five, not seven, not ten. Just three. So, again, it's another way of being intentional. That's very intentional. And audience well, and George and everybody <laughs> listening, what a great way to be intentional. Good stuff, Judy. Really good <laughs> stuff. Really good stuff. We could talk about networking a lot, you know, but we're going to take another yes. quick, quick, quick break because we're coming down to the last few minutes in our hour. So we're going to be right back with a little bit more of some of these tips. And you don't want to miss any more of this uh, spicy business talk you're listening to diana spicy business talk on rmc on air.com we'll be right back hey are you tired of those same old energy drinks with bad taste make a switch to pitbull energy drink with a guaranteed no aftertaste pitbull offers more energy with ginseng and vitamins b6 and b12 with a ginger ale lemon lime flavor Pitbull meets the consumer's demand for better tasting and healthier energy products with a guaranteed no aftertaste. Make a switch to Pitbull Energy Drink. Pitbull offers more energy with ginseng and vitamins B6 and B12. With a ginger ale lemon lime flavor, Pitbull meets the consumer's demand for better tasting and healthier energy products. For more information on Pitbull energy drinks, bars, and mixes, visit their website at hiphopbev.com. That's hiphopbev.com. Online orders available at hiphopbev.com. Hi, it's Diana Price. You're listening to Diana's Spicy Business Talk Radio. And we're having a great lunch today, but we're not getting any calories. We're just having a great conversation. Us girls are here talking to all of our audience and having a great time about how we sell in a skirt and, you know, the advantages and, you know, how we can be more effective and intentional with the, sell, the whole sales process. So Judy Holmerman is just fun to talk to. She's great. She's so much fun to talk to. And we're just having this conversation that is just, just between us girls. But you get to listen. You get to listen in. Isn't that cool? Judy, we forgot to ask you. Now, we're almost down. So we, ha we have some things that we want you to give us some really good tips because we know you have all the answers. So the must-have tips to improve your sales performance. Judy Holmerman, you back? You there? I'm here. There you go. Okay. Yep. I'm here. Okay. I, I would say the number one tip is you have to be focused because in sales, you know, and especially if you're an entrepreneur in sales, you're a shiny object person. And yes. so everything looks good. You yes. know, squirrel, everything looks good. So you have to be very focused. And one of the ways that I always tell people is to work within a triangle. There's three things that you, you should be able to do and no more than three. So for me, it's, you know, selling, it's, um, speaking, training, and coaching. So if you're in it. sales, you have to think of three things. You can't add anything else to it because the triangle has three sides. If you're gonna add anything else into it, you gotta get rid of one. So if you're in sales, you have to do networking, you have to do product knowledge, you have to do a sales process. You know, there's three things there. Don't bring too many other things into it, but focus is number one. And number Huge. two is don't think you could do everything yourself because you can't. Even if you're a salesperson and you're at the top of the heap, it doesn't matter. You need to have resources available to you for things that you can't or things that you don't do. You know, for me, let's if I go back to when I first started selling in insurance, I sold life and health. So I always uh -huh. had a property and casualty person in my back pocket because I couldn't do that. That you would for you know, that I, business that you couldn't do. That's right. Okay. So if good salesperson, you should have resources available to you that are reliable that you can refer to for your clients. And then the third part is really know your stuff. You got to know your stuff backwards and forwards yes. because the worst thing you could do is wing it and just say, oh yeah, that's how, this is how it works. And it doesn't work it like that. Doesn't work so like that. no, just uh, that's, those are the three things that I would say that would really help you in your sales. It's th those are 
the top three. I think those are so important that, you know, you, you covered some really, really good tips. And we talked earlier, and we keep talking, this whole conversation is threaded with how we have to be intentional. Why sales is no longer a transaction. So, Judy, talk a little bit about why delight is the new sales. <laughs> well, let's put it this way. If you are going into a sales um, appointment and you are going in with the intent of selling, you probably won't sell. Okay? You have to go in with the intention of delighting somebody yes. with the knowledge yes. and with the information that they need to make an informed decision together with you. You're not making the decision, they're not making it alone because you have the information, they have the why. So in order for this to be an, an amazing experience for them, you have to be able to work together. And that's that and it becomes a conversation. It doesn't become a sales, right. you know, I have to do this or I can't pay my rent or you know whatever. Right. It becomes a conversation and the process is much more natural. That, you know, I just I just I hope people really get that sales is so different now. It's not, you know, it is still and we got to go through this duty too. It is still the questions, but you have to ask the right kind of questions. You can't just go who what when why you can't just go throwing questions out there. What are the questions that what are the how can you target your questions to be more effective when you ask them? Well, there's, you know, there's all different types of questions, but the two that you really need to know are the close-ended and the open-ended. The close-ended are more of the the yes, the no, the maybe so. When do you want to start? How do you want to pay for it? Who is going to be here? Whatever. And those are more male questions because you're getting, mm -hmm. you're gathering information, mm -hmm. okay? And you're getting the facts and the figures. The open-ended is more of a female question because we're going to make you speak, whether you like it or not. You can't just nod your head yes or no. Right. You actually have to give us information. And so it's more of a relationship question. Yes. So, and, and let me just say, you also have to have the close-ended in there because you do have to sell. Remember what I said? Women don't ordinarily close all the time. So, yes, gather this stuff and make this relationship, but then go back to the close-ended question of, when do you want to begin this and how do you want to pay for it? So you have to use the combination. We just don't use closed first. We use it second. Mm -hmm. So you use closed second. Yes. You use the open-ended to get the why and then you use the close-ended to close the deal. Yeah. Because, you know, you, you want, like you said, you want to keep people talking and transacting and, and not, not transacting, conversing. I, why did I say that? I hate the transactional type. The, to conversing and, and interacting. So the, the, there's most of the times you don't want to ask closed-in questions. So when I heard you say that, I said, yeah, that's exactly where it fits. You are abs absolutely right at the very end when you are closing the, the sale. Correct. Absolutely. Correct. This is very powerful, Judy. So th we are just about out of time. So I want you to give um, our audience, you know, information, any information that you want to tell them about how to reach you, you know, anything else that you're doing. It's just been a pleasure to have you on here. We probably have to do an encore because we didn't get through all of the questions and we didn't get through all of I our know. lunch detail. So <laughs> I know. We didn't do that. You didn't do it on my show either. So it, it just That's doesn't That's true. We didn't like do it on your show either. But, but, you know, I mean, obviously, I would love for you to come to my website, which is sellinginaskirt.com. There's a bunch of stuff that you can look at. There is one-minute videos that are sales tips. There's all kinds of information that you can pull down and, and look at. Um, I have written books. The books are on there. There's, there's a lot of information. But can I give everybody something for free? Yes, ma'am. Of course you can. Please. Okay. Okay. So if you go to sellinginaskirt.com forward slash special dash offer, you can get, you will get an ebook called Skirting the Issues. And it's seven different um, ideas and strategies for sales. And it is, it's an ebook. And it, I actually had written it and forgot all about it. And then I thought, well, that was, yeah, I know. Judy. Duh. And so now, I, yeah, I, yes. So I'm going to give it to you, to all your listeners Thank for you. free. So sellinginaskirt.com forward slash special dash offer. And, you know, it, you can download it immediately and it's, it's pretty cool. 
awesome. I think we just put it on. We just put it on the screen. So everybody, if you didn't get that, we just put it on the screen. You should have a look at that. And yes. linking with me and Facebook me and Twitter me. It's all on selling in a skirt. It's, LinkedIn is the only one that's Judy Hoberman. Everything else is selling, selling in a in skirt. A skirt. Selling in a skirt. Yep. Selling in a skirt. Selling in a skirt has been so awesome today. Judy, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're out of time right now. This has been a fabulous lunch. It has been a fabulous 12 noon Tuesday for Who's Who in the Seat. And we have had the Who's Who of sales in the seat today. Thank you so much, Judy Hoberman. We will see you next Tuesday on Diana's Spicy Business Talk Radio. Now, you be sure to get that offer from Judy, and you be sure also to go to our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Spicy Business Talk. Put in your recipe, because we are going to be giving away prizes for the people that have the best spicy recipe, okay? You can't, you, you, you just want to really stay tuned to see what the prizes are going to be. Thank you for being with us. We'll see you next week.